Hello, this is Ryan from Amnesty. I'm going to show you Pakakuti, or the Incans. I probably pronounced his leader's name wrong, but that's alright. Anyway, I'm going to show you the victory conditions I'd recommend if you were to play the Incans. I'll show you the social policies and their two unique units, or in this case, their unique unit and unique uh, terrain builder building thing. So, he has the Great Andean Road, which means units ignore terrain costs when moving into any tile with hills, no maintenance, maintenance costs for improvements in hills, and half costs elsewhere. So essentially that means your infrastructure will be very dominant, you will be able to produce quite a bit, and also you are going to be dominate, dominating in hill type terrains. So if you play on a map, it's kind of like a rocky mountain kind of map, they will dominate quite well because of the increased production alongside you know he doesn't he can just roll through the hills like no other so most turn most players including myself i play continents and things like that usually um what you'll expect is to be out in the mountains um mountains hilly area but don't expect that you'll just kind of be able to have a whole map of that I'll just kind of be started around your start bias area, just a couple, just the surrounding area, I should say. Anyway, uh, getting into the victory conditions I'd recommend. Number one would be domination, because you're going to be able to produce quite a lot, especially in and around your capital. I would suggest that you expand. Um, the more production that you have throughout all the cities, you're going to easily be able to dominate. And again, the biggest thing is that you will be able to cruise through the hills like nobody else. So you can use that to your advantage to either run away or sneak attack or whichever you may want to do. And then secondly, I'd recommend science. Again, you're going to produce a lot of production throughout the cities. So if you don't want to take over things, but you'd rather just settle things up or whichever, you can do that. And since your city should be able to produce quite a bit, you'll be able to build those science related buildings such as libraries, universities, public schools down the line and things like that. And then thirdly, diplomatic. I wouldn't say that's a very good uh, way to go. I mean you can do it. It's not impossible. The only benefit that the Incans really have is again they'll be able to produce a lot. Now you know that's nice but in terms of diplomatic victory it's not really beneficial to you or to anybody. Um, and lastly, I'd recommend his culture. I personally believe you're wasting a really good personality trait on building a few cities because, again, you're able to have, uh, you're able to move through the hills. You don't have to pay for the improvement in the hill. Um, and it, it just, it just seems like you're wasting the personality trait if you just have a couple cities. Um, again, it's not impossible. It is very doable, as with anything else. So, he has the Slinger and the Terrace Farm. So, I'll show you those. The Slinger will cost you 40 production or 80 faith. He is an archery unit. He'll have a combat bonus of 4, a range combat of 7, a range of 2, and a movement of 2. His ability is he cannot melee attack. That is quite obvious, as any archery unit cannot melee attack. He will not slap you in the face with his weird slinging sling, and then he can withdraw before melee, which when I've played up against the Incans while they've attacked me, it's one of the most irritating things in the world to try to hit the target and then he bumps backward for that annoying reason. At any rate, it's very strong for that reason. Um, if you do want to dominate early, I recommend building tons of these and just harassing the hell out of your enemies because you will have that annoying bounce back feature but for you as a player that's a good thing because you can run away um, and then he has a special terrace farm that's just a something the workers can build it'll yield you plus one food and if you're near a mountain it'll give you another extra piece of food uh, essentially it's just a terrace farming farming thing that you can put on mountain or hill tiles, I should say, not mountain tiles. Um, so it helps out if you are in complete, let's say for instance, um, plains or desert hill tiles, because then you are able to produce some sort of food. That way you're not stuck having a city that does nothing 
and they starve and they want water. So it it helps for the growth. And now I will show you the social policies I recommend if you play the game. Before I show you any social policies, I'm going to show you the Incan start bias. Um, it's kind of an odd one that I have here. I mean, you will sometimes spawn around the jungle. You will be around grasslands, some plains. But normally there are a little bit more hills. Um, I mean, there, there's a couple here, and I can tell if I go to the west, there's going to be a mountain in the fog here. So I'm positive there's going to be tons of hilly spots all in around there. So, now that you have a general idea of your start bias as the Incans, uh, I will tell you what social policy I'd recommend. And if you haven't guessed already, definitely be li Liberty, because Liberty is the one that supports expanding quickly. And uh, you'll get the free worker, he'll work for you quicker as well. You'll get a free settler, and then your capital will be able to make settlers quicker. Um, you'll get more production out of your cities, and then top of everything, once you fill out this tree, you get a free great person of your choice, so you get to decide whether or not you want a great scientist, a great engineer, whatever you want. Um, so, that's going to wrap up the Incans. I hope you enjoyed. Please rate, subscribe, and comment. Thanks for